This is Video to Markdown. It's a super simple comics project that I wanted to build to generate YouTube thumbnails for Markdown content, such as GitHub Readmes or Convex Component Docs. Yes, I am aware that I could just use the URL for the thumb that YouTube gives us, but if I do that, this is what it end up looking like. So you see, it's not immediately obvious that this image represents a video that you can click on to watch. So that's what I wanted to fix with this project. I also wanted to experiment with the R2 component, which is a component for storing and managing files on Cloudflare's R2 service. And I'm planning on doing a full video just on that component soon, so get subscribed to the channel as you aren't gonna to wanna to miss that one. Oh, and stick around to the end of this video as I'm gonna give a bit of a spicy take on the R2 component and how it relates to Convex. So without further ado, let's jump into this project and see how I built it and how you can do the same yourself. All right, so this is Video to Markdown and it's a basic React feed TypeScript app. I started it just using one of the Convex quick starts, the React one. So check out the Convex documentation if uh, you haven't done a Convex project before. So the app's pretty simple. I've got some corner decorations that are this little Convex made with Convex and this little um, GitHub link in the corners. Then we've got the hero section uh, and the video form and the video section. The video section is just a videos list, which is the list uh, of videos. So this is a publicly viewable list of videos that other people have done in here. And the video form is very simple, really. It's just a single uh, convex action uh, process video that takes a URL that the user provides in here and then calls the API images process video URL. So let me just quickly show you that. So if I paste a video in here, it takes a second to do the processing and then we see it turn up here. And we can copy the markdown if we want and paste it into or docs or wherever else. So if we just hop into the process video URL function, like I said, it's a convex action that's gonna take in the URL args. The first thing we're gonna do is gonna grab the YouTube video ID from the URL. Um, the URL could be one of the various formats that YouTube gives us. Once we have that, we can grab the video title using the YouTube O embed API which means I don't need Google API token to do this. It gives us some very basic metadata. Unfortunately, it doesn't give us things like the length of the video. Uh, I would have liked to have had that to be able to insert into the corner of the video down here, but right now it doesn't give us that. <laughs> Looks like somebody <laughs> has just discovered this site. I'm not sure where from, but they've put in another video in here just while I'm filming this. Okay, interesting. Hopping back into our process video URL, we are going to grab the original thumbnail URL for the video. So. This is a URL that uh, YouTube gives us. It's image.youtube.com vi slash then the video ID and then max de uh, max res default jpeg. So this is a publicly accessible URL for the thumbnail. But then obviously what we want to do is we want to be able to put this little red play symbol on the front of it. So that's what we're going to do here in this fetch and decorate thumb. First thing we're going to do is we're going to grab the bytes from that thumbnail, download it. We're then going to create a hash of that thumbnail. Now we'll use that in a minute. But then what we're also going to do is we're going to add uh, the decorated circle, red circle to the thumbnail. And the way we do that is using GIMP. You might not be familiar with GIMP. I wasn't. Um, thankfully, Cursor was. <laughs> but uh, I'm more used to the Sharp library, which is an image processing library. Unfortunately, Sharp, though, doesn't run on in Convex's V8 isolates. So to be able to use it, you not only have to declare your action as a node action, but you also have to declare the library as external package in here, which kind of slows up the development process a little bit. So I wanted to avoid that and I wanted to try out a new library. So this GIMP one is apparently written entirely in JavaScript, so you don't need any native libraries. Therefore, it will work in a V8 isolate. So that's what this, this function does is it just, it reads the image um, and then I place a red circle and a triangle inside there. And then I compose those two things together and then I set a max, I resize it to ensure that it's not too big. And then I encode it as a JPEG. So once we have our decorated thumbnail, we can then finally uh, upload it to R2. So as I mentioned at the start, we're gonna be using the Cloudflare R2 component for this project. So if you scroll down in, in the convex components directory, we get to the Cloudflare R2 component. So as it says there, it allows us to serve, uh, store and serve files with the Cloudflare R2 file storage service. So just like with all components, we first must create a convex.config.ts file and tell convex that we're gonna be using the R2 components. 
Once we have that, we can create um, an R2 object, which is effectively our interface into using the components. Then we can just uh, call store on it and to store an image. So once we have it stored, we have a key, which we then use with some other bits and pieces and we save into the convex database. I should just mention that for cl the Cloudflare R2 component to work, we do need to set some environment variables such as the access key and the secret key and the endpoint in this particular bucket that we want to be saving these files to. But once we've done that, we have files showing up in our videos table here, all the information that we uh, saved in the mutation. But we're not quite done yet. We have one more step down here, step five, which says schedule initial thumbnail check for tomorrow. So what's going on here is if you have a look on the uh, thumbnails, that have, the generated thumbnails that are already being produced, we have this timer here. And this is a thumbnail monitor. So the next check is in 23 hours. And it says it automatically checks if YouTube thumbnails changed and updates. And the interval increases from one day to two days to four days to eight days to a max of 16 days. And the reason why I did this is because sometimes um, you want to do YouTube thumbnail tests, which means when you're checking, uh, you're running an A-B test between three different thumbnails. So that means that the default thumbnail might actually change over time because what might start it off as one thumbnail, you may replace it with something else as part of the experiment. So I wanted to have a way that the URL was going to remain stable, but it was still going to be able to update potentially if the thumbnail changed. So that's what this does is it checks every one day. And if there's no change, it'll, in, it'll check again in two days. And if there's no change, it'll check in four and so on and so on up to 16. But if it has changed, it will reset back to one day. So it's a basically an exponential back off to prevent me hammering the YouTube API too often. Now, I'm not going to bore you by going into all the details of the thumbnail checking, but basically it just involves what I just mentioned before, which is re-downloading the YouTube thumbnail, comparing its hash against the one that we saved from before. And if it differs, we regenerate the thumbnail and then save it into R2 with the same thumbnail key as before, and thus it replaces it. And that's about it for the code. It's pretty simple what it does, really. Now, I do want to talk about a little issue that I ran into with this, which I thought was kind of unexpected. You see, once you've stored the image into the Cloudflare R2, you're obviously then going to want to be able to serve that to your users. And the way you would do that with the R2 component is you would use this r2.get URL function down here. And you pass it that key that we received when we stored the image. But you also notice this options object, which is optional, but it's actually kind of critical. You see, every single image that you store and then you use the get URL for on Cloudflare R2 has an expiry. And you see, you see it says here that its default is 15 minutes. So that means that the URL that you get for this image is gonna change like every 15 minutes up to a maximum of I think seven days. So if I just create a temporary query here, just to show you what I mean, by using the R2 get URL um, function and then hop back into the app, we get some log messages. And this is what it looks like. You see, firstly, this is a pretty ugly URL to be uh, dropping into a markdown document. But you also see that it has this temporary signature uh, payload after the uh, actual file itself. So this is no good if you wanna be putting this into a markdown document because you want the URL to the image to be staying constant all the time. You don't want to have to be updating all the documentation that uses this thumbnail all the time, every seven days or whatever. It's not a great experience. So what you want is that this URL to be constant and static. And it turns out that the only way to do this really in production is to use a custom domain. So that's what I did. That's why this website is video2markdown.com. I normally wouldn't bother going to the effort of buying a domain and then to just to host a little demo project like this. But, and for it to have a good user experience, this URL needs to be static. Therefore, I have to use a subdomain and then host it like this. So to me, that was a bit of a gotcha. I thought that I was gonna be able to get away with just doing this project for free, you know, with free egress and effectively free storage on R2. But it turns out to be able to actually do this with what I wanted, which is to be able to host these images like this and have them static, you have to buy a custom domain. So. There you go, lesson learned. Okay, so I promised a spicy take at the start of this video, so here it is. Convex has a really good file storage system baked into it. You can upload files, manage them and serve them, which is all well and good and is all I kind of needed for this project. So why would I introduce the R2 component then? Well, other than the fact that I'm an incorrigible tinkerer that just wanted to experiment with a component, it's also that the pricing for the R2 service is kind of unique. 
No charge for egress means that it's gonna cost me absolutely nothing if people take the thumbnail URL that this tool generates and they just plonk it onto some high traffic website or documentation. So although convex file storage isn't exactly expensive, it doesn't have that hard to beat free egress that R2 offers. Also, unlike R2, the convex file storage doesn't currently serve files over CDN. So you can be waiting a few more milliseconds to serve that thumbnail from the convex servers rather than whatever server is closest to the user. So I would say that if any of those things matter to you, like it does for me on this particular project, I would say go ahead and take a look at the R2 component. Otherwise, probably convex file storage will be just fine for your project. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this project and video. If you want to see the source code or the link to the project itself, then I've left those down below. And just a little note, I find it incredible that in 2025, it's possible to build a project that doesn't involve AI somewhere, but here we are. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, then don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button. And if you do have a question, then leave me a comment down below or find me on Discord. I read every single comment and reply to most. And if you like this video, then you might want to check out this one. It's a video I did a little while back that highlights a neat trick to fake high frequency updates on Convex. Pretty cool, in my opinion. All right, thanks for watching. Until next time, cheerio.